As our exploration of Northern Florida continues, we brought the scamp over to Stephen Foster Folk Cultural State Park, and we were settling into a nice level campsite. We were pretty happy with our spot, and we got some late lunch because we were actually able to check in early, and then we came up with a plan to explore some of the unique features of this park. We're going out exploring some of the interesting things in this park. There's actually a lot of buildings and different structures to see. No swimming here, which is kind of a bummer because it's going to get really hot the next couple days. We're going to be going into the 90s. But an interesting park. Seems like they hold a lot of fairs and festivals here. We have a, another place where they do ranger talks and a bunch of places where they have like outdoor concerts and things. So much stuff going on at this park. Is this the Swanee River? It's just a higher part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not quite as wide as the part we were staying at in Mayo, but they still have the flood pole. Mm -hmm. So you can see how angry is the Swanee River. So this pole does show you the levels for the flood. And the highest one there was 1973. And that was the one that was on the top of the pole at the campground, right? Mm -hmm. So we would be well underwater oh, yeah. right now. <laughs> like a good, I don't know, four feet, five feet over our head. <laughs> That's crazy, like from down there all the way up to here, that is a huge amount of water. It's safe to say we won't be living near the Swanee. No. Hey, lizard. It's like not even moving. I think he blends in your blue. You know you're blue, right? I can see you. Okay. Yep, there you go. This is the craft village. And you could do bike rentals. Five dollars for a half day, ten dollars for a whole day is pretty good. Yeah. But this, I think, is where they do like craft fairs and things on the weekends. That is the camp store. They have like books and drinks and things in there. And then there's a couple other buildings that we're gonna check out. Yeah. Mayhaw Jelly. That's the stuff we got at that fair when we were in Madison. Got the blacksmith shop in here. There's shots for Andy. I'll try to entice him to come down here. <laughs> I wonder if they actually have a blacksmith in here like they do at Bastow. Yeah, they got everything in here. Yeah. Right. Excuse you, sir. Yeah. No dogs allowed. Hey. It's under. Is it? Yeah. Is it supposed to rain? I don't think so. Hmm. It's a fast little lizard. He's so neat. Oh, lost him. One of the main features of this park is the bell tower. Although it was damaged in a hurricane, so it's not currently working. It's a lot bigger than I thought from pictures. I wonder if you can go up. It, I don't think it's open, but maybe when they do festivals, they open it. It's probably a great view from up there. <laughs> we don't know where he's going. <laughs> the mystery door. I'll stay here and tend to the dog. Come on, Red. Let's walk around. No pets. Sorry, Red. Come on. At least we can walk around on the path. And then next we'll go over to the mansion, which looks really cool. We're walking around the tower, and I just saw my first gopher tortoise. You can see right here is the whole, it just, I saw like the back end of the shell going in there as we came around the corner. I don't know if he's going to come back out because, you know, red makes a lot of noise, but. The bottom of the bell tower has this museum with interesting architecture and lots of artifacts because this park is all about preserving the culture 
and the folk art and the heritage of this area. They are in the process of restoring the 97 Bell Carillon that will hopefully ring out again soon when they finish fixing it. It's a good looking house. A little big for us. We headed over to see the mansion before it started to rain and we ended up running into one of the many helpful volunteers at this park that works so hard to keep these grounds meticulously cared for. And he explained to us that this was never actually somebody's house. It was just built as a museum and a place where they could have cultural events. They have a cafe. A cafe? Yeah. Ooh. Okay. And inside you're going to see some of the dioramas that this park is known for and they depict the songs that were written by Stephen Foster, his most famous one where he talks about the Suwannee River. And Interestingly, he never actually saw the Suwannee River, he just thought that it worked really well in the lyrics of his song. One of the volunteers that we spoke with explained to us that they didn't bring back all of the staff after things reopened from the pandemic, so they rely on volunteers even more heavily than they used to, to upkeep the grounds, to take care of the displays, to organize and archive the historic information that's housed in the upper levels of this building. So they really rely heavily on the volunteers to help things stay nice and clean and to preserve this history that they're trying to take care of. Each of the little moving dioramas in here were made by hand specifically for these exhibits and they depict one of Stephen Foster's songs. A lot of work. That was pretty comfortable. comfortable. Doing some porch sitting. That's a southern thing. Hi, Red. Oh, hi. 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 Okay. <laughs> Found a map of the Swanee Wilderness Trail and then the hiking trails here. Huh. Cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's crazy. Leave it. And here comes the storm. The wind just kicked up like real quick. That's the interesting thing here. It like yeah. it will thunder for a couple hours. And then all of a sudden the storm just like comes and the wind, it's like you snapped your fingers. It's crazy. Leave it to Florida. Kind of blew around for a little while, sprinkled. And then the sun came out and now it's beautiful. <laughs> so that's how that goes. <laughs> I read. Silly dog. Oh, it's so tiny. <laughs> this campground had a lot of snowbirders because of its location and the sites are really nice and a lot of them are pull through or big rig friendly so we were one of the smallest rigs in the campground there was one teardrop at the front but we had several people who walked by the scamp and stopped us and asked how all three of us fit in this little thing which we thought was so funny One of our favorite things about staying at this park was that it was quiet and peaceful. We slept well, there was nobody playing loud music, it was just a nice relaxing atmosphere. And we woke up one morning to this beautiful fog. Today was our hottest day of this trip so far. It got up to, I think it was like 92. And it wasn't bad. It was definitely not our hottest day we've ever been in the scamp. I leave that record to our Assateague trip last summer. That first day we got there was like torture. And I like hot weather. <laughs> so 
this camp has been doing really well. We just keep the fan on to go up through the vent and we have the awning out over there, which is working great. But what I wanted to talk to you about was the Starlink because this has been such a process of figuring out how to work with the Starlink. We had this idea that you really needed a very open shot of the sky. So what I was doing was going to like a baseball field or something and like setting it up so I could get work done. We have been seeing people with the Starlink on their roof, even at campgrounds like this where there's a ton of trees and come to find out, Pat was like, let me just try it. Even though there's a giant tree right next to us, he was like, let me just try it. So he set it up and I'm uploading a video right now. And I just like, Feel like kicking myself because we've had it this whole time and I could have been getting so much more work done but it's okay now we know and it's basically pointed toward a tree but it's still working like not the fastest that it has ever worked it's uploading a video right now it's probably gonna take about an hour and 15 minutes for a 15 minute video and really like one of the things that I've been trying to find on YouTube is other people talking about working while they're traveling and how reliable their Starlink is, how um, fast their connection is at different places. And I mean, it depends. Every place you go is going to be a little bit different, so it's hard to judge based on other people. But I really didn't hear a lot of people like talking about the details of how well their Starlink worked or how, um, how many places they were able to use it at. So that's all kind of stuff that we're just figuring out as we go. But overall I'll count today as a pretty good success in terms of testing our heat tolerance. I feel like it's pretty good. Pat went for a run today so <laughs> he didn't even care. <laughs> and now I'm making dinner so let's check on the video. But this tarp setup is great. This has made a huge difference just having this shade here and if you're wondering why we're not using the gazelle right now it's because one of the bad things about the Gazelle is it has no CM mesh, it has the really fine mesh. So we actually read the reviews before we bought it and a lot of people said if you use the Gazelle when it's very hot out, the mesh is so fine it actually kind of traps the heat. And we found that to be true when we had it up at the Swanee River Rendezvous. There were a couple days where it was a little cool and I actually liked it because the Gazelle was like a little bit warmer, kind of heats up with the sun. But that means when it's really hot like this, we don't want to use the gazelle if it's not buggy. If it was buggy, that's a whole other thing. But the bugs aren't bad here, so this tarp keeps the sun off of us, but we still get a nice breeze, which is great. You're ready for bed. It's not even dark yet. <laughs> okay, so the video says is it 53 minutes left, and it's at 35%. So I can't, I can't believe it. Like we could have been using it so much more this whole time we really thought you needed like a fully open clear shot of the sky but now we know today we're leaving stephen foster state park we've been an hour before we have to get out of here it's great that the florida state parks have a 1 p.m checkout because if you want to kind of take your time and really clean things out i like cleaning a little extra on the days that we're moving because when you're parked it does tend to get a little disheveled in there so we've got everything else set up we're just going to take the tarp down and then we're heading about 45 minutes away to the Swanee River State Park and this is our last day that we have booked so kind of on the winding down part of the trip we got everything packed up took down the tarp put that away got everything secured in the scamp so that we could head to our last park and I was kind of sad to leave Stephen Foster. We were only here for a couple days. I couldn't get a long reservation. A lot of people go in and out of these sites because they use it as a stopover on their way going farther south. So harder to get a longer reservation. We're back to dumping the tanks. We actually used the sink here. So we'll do our little chat while, while Pat dumps the tanks. <laughs> So this park was substantially quieter, more peaceful than some of the other ones that we've been to. Nobody was playing music. It was just a very different vibe here. And I think part of that was spring break is over. We're like six days into April now. So I think spring break is over for most schools. So there were a couple kids like hanging out with their grandparents here, but 
very quiet, very well behaved. There wasn't this like chaos like there was when we were at Swanee River. And I think the timing was just bad. It really depends a lot on timing. And people, <laughs> when we left, people were like, ooh, you're going camping in Florida in March? Like, you sure? And we figured out why. But it, it wasn't terrible. It was just, especially with the dog, like, Red was very unsettled when there were people constantly walking around the scamp and voices and screaming and stuff like that, like really unsettled him and he was always real jumpy, where here he was just a lot more relaxed. So that's nice because when he's more relaxed, we're also more relaxed because we're not running after him all the time. But it was nice to be able to use the tanks to wash dishes and stuff. I don't mind walking to the bathhouse and washing dishes. Sometimes I'll do that anyway, just to keep the scamp cleaner because the sink is so small, I end up like splashing all over the place. So sometimes it's just easier to use the camp sink anyway, but we've only been using gray water in our tank because right now our sewer hose lives in a trash bag. I know, don't judge, we're those people. <laughs> because we still don't have the holder that will fit our new longer sewer hose. So that's the only container we could come up with. And um, this is really the only time we're using it. So it's not that bad. It's just gray water. It's just soapy dish water. That's it. <laughs> so um, that's how it's going. But it was nice to be able to use that. And it'll be really nice when we get home and we get the new container for the sewer hose. And then things will be back to normal for a short period of time. That never lasts long with an RV. You just have to accept that, especially when you have an older RV. Everything's gonna break all the time. It's just how it goes. That's a little bit of foreshadowing of what's to come for our stay in Suwannee River State Park. Make sure that you are subscribed so that you can come along with us as we let new adventures begin. And thank you so much to our Patreon members for your support in making these videos happen. And it's all fair to be aware and I'll be there. So don't be scared. Just take a deep breath of air. And one, two, three to ten. You begin to focus again. And no time flies. We'll have enough to realize this bigger than the both of us.